Hello and welcome to Just Grasp Losers Finals between Feathers and Mig Download here. We just saw Feathers uh, get dropped down here last week, so we'll see if they can go ahead and get themselves redeemed and back up into that Grand Finals to fight Poulter once again, or if Download's going to come from the runner-up position and take it on over to Poulter's desk. I have Rose with me here joining me today to watch this best of five, or maybe a split. We'll find out once we get into it. How's it Hello. going, Rose? Good. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to seeing this game. I like both these players, and they're both really good players, so it should be fun. Oh, we've already got yeah, exciting we're... stuff. They, <laughs> um, they did possibly have a gentleman's agreement to not pick the characters that both of them seem to agree are strong. So maybe that's what we're seeing here, without any Hawkman or Bison. Yeah, um, we're actually seeing everything but what I was expecting, so this is pretty exciting. I like this. I like these kind of gentlemen's agreements. What do we got here? We have Hazama, Kami, Enchantress, Gold Lewis, Eno, New, and Ryu. We're gaming. Man. So, uh, right, so far, meaning towards Feathers team. Uh, downloads must have been inspired by you with the Kami and Enchantress here. <laughs> uh, download apparently has been an Enchantress player for longer than I've known them. Oh, have they? Uh, uh, I, I think so. That's what I, my, my recollection is, but I could be wrong. Uh, the cami is exciting. I do want to see that though. Like I enjoy all three of these characters. I could I could play this this team so far in a best of three. Um. Oh yeah. There, there, oh, there. And Lune. Oh my god. Okay, now he you. is just stealing my team. <laughs> He's just stealing your team. <laughs> this is the polar knight. I will laugh. Oh, it's not. It's happy chaos. Okay. Okay. There. I they can't stole... play that character at all. There they stole go. Reggie's character. <laughs> yeah. All right. What do we have over here? What is the fifth character for feathers? Seems a chill in here. Uh, Arakune. All right. Okay, well. maybe we actually will see the feathers Arakune. We should because feathers is really good at the character. He never plays his comfort characters in tournament for some reason. He always plays like the characters he thinks are strong. All I know but, is that the, some of these characters are either about to enter the board for the first time or about to <laughs> put put some more numbers on the board today. <laughs> So I am taking notes of my own here. Do you have the characters down? I have Arakune, Ryu, Gold Lewis, and Eno for feathers. I did not catch his fifth. It was someone. Uh, Arakune, Ryu, New, Gold Lewis, Eno. New. Okay, sounds good. And for download, we have Hazama, Kami, Ne, Happy Chaos. And I already forgot the fifth again. Five is just such a hard number. True. Uh, where's uh, Hazama Kami? Hazam. <laughs> Kami, Lune, Enchantress. And oh, Enchantress. Chaos. There you go. Okay, cool. So Enchantress is actually, it looks like what we're going to be seeing in game one, assuming I am interpreting this uh board position correctly yeah that's exactly what's in the hand there so we're gonna see enchantress versus ryu this is not in my ballpark at all to tell you how this matchup goes so i'll let you handle it <laughs> um this is an interesting one uh enchantress has a very good projectile into specifically ryu's uh Hadouken with her fire wave so enchantress will be able to be the zoner in this matchup um, but Enchantress might is weak into a lot of boosting because she doesn't really have options of her own to boost stats by and large. And Ryu, as we know, is really good at boosting. So it'll be a question of like if download can keep the pace high enough that Ryu can't just overwhelm him with boosts. Yeah, that seems to be the uh, Ryu line from what I've noticed every time I've seen him is just boost to boost and uh, you have godlike cards <laughs> suddenly. Um, and, uh, you know, Ryu is a very solid character. We've seen Moriarty play it in this tournament. You can literally play EXs and this character also works wonders. So we'll have to see how yeah, Enchantress decides to play. I mean, you don't even need EXs it. for most of these cards. Oh, it's yeah. just like, just Donkey. But not even, yeah, I mean, yeah, you really just don't. You can play EX normals and just play your specials. Um, but I don't imagine we'll see Feathers going for that line. Feathers is a much more defensive player. I would be really interested to see an aggressive Ryu versus Enchantress, actually, though. Yeah. Um, well, coin flip underway with Ryu going first. Ryu first. Um, 
So in a lot of matchups, Enchantress has a really good turn one, especially if she's player one because of homing orb. Um, on player two, you still have like the fire wave, you have slows. Um, Ryu can actually play like a Tatsu and just kind of trade in the worst case into... Or, okay, that even loses the fire wave. Okay, so it is a real mix-up. Um, but again, probably not going to see Feathers initiating turn one. We might see Feathers go for like... Honestly, just like stepping in. <laughs> yeah. That or a boost. That's what I was thinking too, is either Ryu's going to boost or just... Get start moving in either with the Ryu prep or just you know making his way, <laughs> just making his way over to Enchantress. Uh, yep. And if Enchantress is gonna be playing the Zoner this time, I mean Enchantress has tools to get out. Yep. So. But yeah, Enchantress is weird. We'll we'll see what what Damod ends up going for. Um, she certainly is completely competent at close range, so. It's more of a matter of can Ryu leverage the things he's particularly good at. You think um, this is balanced any particular way? I feel like in terms of like mashup dynamics, it could be pretty even. In terms of absolute power level, I would put Ryu higher than Enchantress, so I'll lean towards Ryu. Oh, he's just going to advance in. There we go, there's that, the run. Yeah, that could be good. Um, it is... Early game Enchantress is a lot worse at zoning than she is later in the game, so it is nice to hold that for the possibility to get in later. But you don't need later if you can just beat her up right now. So Yeah, it looks like we call the first strike wrong, grasp into focus. Enchantress is happy to take that. Yep, that's a great start for download. And focus is a card you want to get used when your hand is relatively full because you don't get to draw a new hand if you play focus with empty hand. So Makes sense. Reasonable strike. I'm curious about the grasp. Ryu really wanted Enchantress in the corner, but like she just can teleport out or spend a bunch of force if she really wants to. So I don't feel like that's really that high impact compared to boosting or striking with one of his scarier cards. I was also kind of curious of what that grasp was meant to accomplish here. Maybe maybe we're respecting the tournament, you know? Just grasp. Just grasp, true. Grasp turn one, or grasp turn two, respecting the tournament first strike. <laughs> Yep. Oh, that's perfect. All right. Well, both pair of players staring at each other. Enchantress, of course, doesn't get to ever draw her hand back until she's on backside or on empty. So she's chilling out there, thinking about what she wants Wait, to do. What did Enchantress do on her first turn? Uh. Let's did see. she strike into the grasp? Yes. Oh, that makes more sense. Okay, if Ryu is going yeah. to try to call out something, well, Enchantress so, doesn't really have any range on mid speeds so i'm still a little unsure about that one yeah i'm still not sure about the grasp either at range one but we got there <laughs> oh yeah. there's the dark story well either that or just a move action we'll find out oh, just, a move, just action. a move action this time no dark story um maybe setting up for a cross out where you just spent a grasp and a cross so it should be relatively safe of course Tatsu will catch it yeah, and that defend could also. be telegraphing a Tatsu. Tatsu would cast it. Could just play Shoryu to beat up the cross. Yep. Chica and chat. Feathers playing Enchantress. Would have expected. No. Uh, download is down here on right side playing Enchantress, uh, Chica. Welcome to the chat also. Oh, yeah. You already got a uh, team. It's perfect. All right, so Enchantress has to strike into Ryu with Defend, which means most of these cards aren't going to break. I mean, it's Ryu. Most of his cards don't break anyways. This, I don't hate the cross here. Even if Ryu, sure, you can at least that's an overhead you don't have to worry about in the future. Yeah, just oh. grasping. Just grasp. Just grasp. <laughs> we're, we're respecting the tournament so hard we've seen two grasp come out in early game. <laughs> yep. And that puts it back pretty even from the early lead Enchantress had. Um, hmm. I wonder what's up with these grasps, though, honestly. Either they're yeah. respecting the na name of the tournament super hard, or what's going on here? Well, the Enchantress grasp made a little more sense to me, because then you call out the Shoryuken to try to ah. put it cross out, and you get Ryu into the corner, which is always nice when you're a zoner. Yeah, that is um, a really good call, actually. Calling out as piece. we see the gauge building up, 
I would be surprised if this is a Metsu Shoryuken game, just because Enchantress can always leave. Um, Metsu Hadouken is going to be a fairly strong card against Enchantress. Ah, uh, yeah, because that outspeeds a lot of Enchantress's options, excluding uh, Homing Orb. Homing Orb, yeah, and you just need to not play it when you lose to Homing Orb. Yeah. I would love to see Enchantress spend the last force and just get a new hand, but okay, this is a good reason not to, is if you actually intend to use this card right now. Oh. Uh, has to reconsider because okay. of the because uh... of the advantage. In that case, yeah, I would really like to see Enchantress just get draw a new hand. Um. Yeah. If Enchantress hadn't revealed the block, it, she could just hold on to it again, I guess. But uh, Ryu knows about it. I wouldn't want to risk getting red. If, in my opinion, like if you reveal a card in a tournament game and your opponent reads it, that's on you. So yeah, that's a hundred percent on you. So it's like I, I really hope that uh, we just see download just kind of get rid of this hand at this point. I mean, one unknown card is still not the greatest, forcing you to wild swing. Yep. If your card's just not great, so hopefully Enchantress just kills the hand. There's the block. There's the cross. Uh, choosing not to get rid of the last card. It looks like my bet is it's a fire wave. Because a Fire Wave is a pretty reasonable defensive option here, and also would have been a reasonable thing to strike with. But now, we'll see what happens. If it is a Fire Wave, I'm predicting like a move action, um, just to get a new hand. Oh, Assault. Alright, fair enough. But yeah, doing a backstep or a move one, we'll never know. I was turning off my top menu so that it looks a bit better here. Fair enough. Oh, uh, right. Ryu just prepping, I'm pretty sure. And back to Enchantress, who goes for a strike. Again, would not mind seeing just a fire wave here, force Ryu to have a speed 5 option. Um, if it is going to go for the Metsuhadu, that's at least what forces him to make a call out against like a magic shot or an assault. Um. But really, pretty early game. Range trees, or range, a lot of things hit. Could be anything. Crit Hado is probably going to beat just about anything Enchantress played here. Ah, uh, yeah. Yep. I'll beat the fire or the flying charge. Yep. Doesn't recur it, just puts it in gauge. Oh, never mind. We'll recur it, put Hado. <laughs> yep. Perfect. Yeah, because Enchantress has a, what, bunch of four guards? Yeah, it's upper spiral orb. Yeah, yeah, that was just a really solid EX there. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. I would be surprised if he struck with it again, though. He's probably recurring it for the boost or just to keep the threat live. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see Hado get struck with again. Not at this range. If uh, Enchantress just knows it's coming, it's going to be pretty obvious. Yep. Metsu Hado would it. be pretty sick here, though. It beats everything, basically, except the EX homing orb. Um, so yeah, that's my that's what I hope. See some aggressive Ryu after all. Overhead Metsuhado right now. Let's make it happen. Overhead Metsuhado. Oh yeah, he has enough gauge too. Just let it rip. Yeah, I wonder if he's yep. gonna see that and just uh or if he's uh gonna take the EX homing orb into account possibility. Yeah. Also a chance of course he hasn't drawn it yet. If you when you were used to playing Enchantress, you forget that other characters don't just get to draw their whole deck. Though right now we are actually pretty even on card scene. Both of them have seventeen left in deck. Chica surprised that Chip and Hawkman were fully ignored in draft. Actually that was something that uh, Rose and I were covering at the very beginning was uh there there or uh, I believe Rose said that there might be some gentleman's agreement here to not play these uh characters like Chip, Hawkman and Axel and such that we would normally see. Yeah, my guess would be those three and Bison maybe are just off the table in this match. Yeah. Because that would be characters that each of these players consider strong and plays relatively frequently. Yep, just kind of playing a more friendly friendly losers finals here. Oh, I really feel like Axel doesn't really fit there. Yeah. You know, Axel just doesn't feel as strong to me as the other three, but whatever. That's fair. I do know that they value Axel pretty highly. Alright, reading here. Um, it's a reasonable time for it. Ryu has a pretty full <coughs> hand, but... Reading the full hand makes sense. 
Yeah, Hazama's here, but I don't think either of these characters players value Hazama <laughs> as highly as those four. Um, the Metsu Hado. There's the Metsu Hado. I okay, but no overhead. Okay, there you go. That's why yeah. it didn't come out. Um, this is a pretty funny hand, actually. Um, if you're reading sweep, you're probably telegraphing something that loses to Hadakin, but it could still just be like a fire wave to trade with it. And like other than that, Feathers has to like block and hope it's not Spike. So maybe he will just go for the crit Hadakin and or reading would also set up a homing orb, which is pretty safe. Um, that seems like a reasonable option. Just yeah. block. Hope it's not the spike. It's a mix-up. Just block. I don't think. Uh, I think the Metsuhado is a little bit spicy here, so I don't think he's going for it. So yeah. just that block is fine. Go for the spicy Metsu. You know yeah, what? What I, if I it's the homing orb, Chica? What if it's the homing orb? I but it looks yeah. like it would have paid off. Or no, it wouldn't. Or yeah, it would have. It would have. Even with the armor, it's not going. Would have been enough to stun out the fire wave. See, I'm with Chica. I would 100% done the spicy Metsu and lost a homing orb, and then been sad about it later. <laughs> yeah. When you play Enchantress, you gotta keep an eye out for these chances to land homing orbs or stuff like a reading, so I would be pretty worried about it if I was playing against her, yeah. because this telegraphs homing orb, like, some of the time to me, even though it's not the most exciting reading payoff, obviously. But, um... Yeah, Ryu just having to block here. Of course, with the fire wave down, Ryu could just Hadouken in response. Um, not even the Metsu, <coughs> just the normal Hadouken would be completely acceptable here. The Enchantress probably doesn't have anything to deal with it. So what happened here? How much damage did he take from this? Um, I saw a block boy. go into Gage and then leave Gage for some reason. It's two there. Do we just take two? I'm assuming that the that block is left gauged for like reasons of crit or something, but Ryu's health has not gone down, and I didn't see any cards leave his hand. Yeah. Um. Oh. oh, are you asking right now? Okay. Yeah. Spent for block. Why is blocking discard? Yeah. <laughs> Donkey kick. Oh, Hado. Okay, sure. Okay, maybe Felders put the block engage and then realized he needed to spend and spent the block itself by mistake. Yeah. But I think we are corrected now. What's wrong <laughs> order? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Alright, perfect. Alright. So they're playing yeah. correctly, they just put it in the wrong order so it wasn't correct. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, fair enough. Like I said, I'd love to see just a Hado. You don't even need the credit, really, here. You could just play a Hado. Um, Enchantress has basically nothing that'll beat it. Um, yeah, Enchantress literally has nothing that'll beat it. They just have to... And both their blocks are gone, too. Yeah, you could just drop Hado. Alright, well, I, okay, you do have to credit just in, case it, just in case it's the magic shot response, but... Okay, or just walk forward and miss telegraphs Metsuhado pretty heavily. Um, I don't like that. I feel like that's just a little inefficient when normal Hado would have done completely fine here. But, I mean, 7 damage is 7 damage. Ah, uh, the homing orb. Yep, which we'll miss. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> they got it. That's not a little stuff. Oh. Yep. Thought that that was a four special for a moment. That's not a four special. Yeah. All right, Enchantress a bit on the back end here. Uh, I mean, do we just exit here as to Enchantress? Is that a thing? You oh. could if you wanted to. This would be. It's a little. I would like to go through a little more of the deck first. Just make sure you're getting maximum value out of the cards. But given your life totals at thirteen, you're. This is probably not a game that's going to deck out. So. Just going back to range one. That was interesting. Do you think that was a dark strafe drawing zero or a move action spending both Walter as one force each? I think it was a dark strafe. Uh, wait. Yeah, they both they're... are valid. They both do the exact same thing. But I think based on the movement of the cards here, this was a dark strafe and drawing zero. Yeah, it was either a dark strafe or two force to walk up. <laughs> or like three force or something to walk up there just to draw a new hand. I mean, either way, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Rather than that, I would have preferred to see the Exceed, though, because the Exceed is relatively valuable. Yeah, um, being able to get back to seven cards every turn is pretty nice. Yeah. Gives you lots of options, and then uh, we can play into Ryu here, who's just going to mole bolt the Metsu since he has no gauge anymore. Makes sense to me. Yep, just to change cards. Seems fair. Um, and again, in this matchup, it's it's basically just a boost. I would, most of the time, Enchantress is probably not going to be initiating too many strikes into you at range one. Yeah. I mean, you never know, but definitely not worth holding on to for three gauge when the game might not even last that long. Yeah, I don't think Metsu Shoryu is very important here either. I think Enchantress is going for another strike. Rush down Enchantress. Let's Rush go. Rush down Enchantress. We're playing range one in only Enchantress. Yep. We saw a flying charge already, but this might be the second flying charge, especially now that destroy use aren't a threat again. Um, because that performs fairly well. Tatsu will still catch it. Yeah, because flying charge will send you across the stage and dodge everything but Tatsu, so this is perfectly fine if that's what's played here. Of course, EX normal Shuriken seems to still be alive, so that is another threat. That's pretty scary, but you just have to hope he doesn't draw it if that is what you're worried about. Where's assaulting into? Oh, it's another grass! <laughs> Holy! Assault was interesting. I'm surprised you didn't have anything better in hand to play. Maybe it is just a hard flying charge call out, and that was the most damaging option. Yeah, that's what I think it was. Is it was just calling out flying charge and just punching it. Yeah. Which makes sense uh, to me. Well, yeah, that feels really bad to me. I think you should just let the enchanter's flying charge if she wants to there, probably. I don't know what's in Ryu's hand. He didn't have anything better than that to play. Uh, Let's see. We saw Ryu's hand earlier. He wrote it down. Uh, block, two one punches, Hado. Okay, and I guess Ultra. the two, one of the one punches is left yeah. um, out of that hand. Yeah. Is the Hado left? The Hado is left. One one punch and one Hado, I think. Yeah. Should be one punch, right. one Hado. Uh, did he get rid Range of Range light? Yeah, he did. He used the block. Yeah. Range Free Light seems good here. Enchantress doesn't has to just kind of rely on deck order to have text for impactful boosts. And Enchantress is low enough that whatever you play after Red Light is going to be pretty threatening. <coughs> um, especially again with that overhead still in play. We could see like an overhead dive just completely shut down any of Enchantress's answers. Um, yeah, because we could just see dive. We could just see. I mean, even what? Even even yeah. a spike, honestly, since we don't have a uh, ex homing orb anymore. Yeah. I guess we have an ex magic shot, maybe. No, yeah. that doesn't. Yeah, but the only downside to spike is you could possibly get crossed out, but yeah, yeah. it's not the end of the world. Um. And they're down both blocks, so yeah, the dive would be perfectly reasonable here as well. Yep. Yeah. Also, if you do an overhead dive, then if you ever get to range again, you could throw out the second Matsuhado. That would be kind of cool if we could see like a two Matsuhado game. Two Matsuhado. Be a Ryu gaming. Alright. Enchantress just strike. striking into it. This could be a cross. Ryu has shown both assaults, I think. And cross would dodge everything except that Hado. If Enchantress is initiating it. Yeah, we've only seen one cross come out from Enchantress, so this is 100% viable to be really cross. Though I guess Ryu could crit Hado if he was really confident that was what it was. Or just, right, he doesn't even need to crit, right? He can just Hado. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, because so... he'll still catch the cross regardless. That's a spider. Oh, board. that's, okay, nice. That's a, a good call up by the Enchantress then that Ryu is going to think it's lacrosse, play the Hado. Um, Enchantress trades up by. Takes two, deals four, nullifies the light, um, also gets to manipulate her hand. She could draw an entirely new hand if she wanted, or she could draw three new cards. Lots of options when you play this card. Um, looks like she's drawing... I saw draw if you're drawing two, two you should draw three. Discard Draws it. two and discards one. Worried about the reading, maybe? Yeah, that's the only thing I could think of for just getting rid of this assault blind like this. Yeah, and that... Was interesting to me. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm also kind of surprised they didn't just draw a third one like you were talking about there, or just to fish for a new hand. So, 
Again, one of the downsides of Enchantress is that you go through your deck super fast. It does make you pretty vulnerable to readings. I think we have seen... Have we seen any focuses out of Ryu? I don't believe so. Yeah, no. I don't mm. think of a single focus that I've seen played. So yeah, with both readings still alive, that is a pretty good... That is probably just getting rid of the only normal in hand, then. Or one of yeah. the only normals in hand. Yeah. But Enchantress could also just exceed and draw a new hand. And it is her turn right now, so maybe that tele... Or is it? Well, what did she do with her actual turn? So she was so she struck with a uh, spiral orb. Oh right, she did strike into it. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Okay, great. Okay, yeah, then sure that makes sense. Just reduce your vulnerability reading, and you can exceed it after or something. Mm -hmm. Doesn't cost you anything if you get an entirely new hand anyway. Yeah, we were just prepping here, and now Enchantress just sitting here on six gauge four hand or four cards can just choose to exceed whenever or. Um, I don't know. Dalma's just been kind of content just playing their deck here, so let's see what they yeah. actually decide to do. Oh, here comes the exceed, right? Well, I see one card. Two. Three and four. Two specials, focus, and block going back in the deck for this X seed. EX grasp staying out. Oh, maybe. Deciding. Um once A grasp back in. Oh, once bolt once EX grasp back. That seems reasonable to me. Um Fierce is good. These are all cards that I would like to put back in my deck after exceeding. Usually you have it easier than this. You've got like a magic shot or something engaged that's just or a homing orb that's just not gonna do anything once you've exceeded. But Oh. You do not need to reveal your hand, by the way. This is giving bleeding information unnecessarily. Not that it matters. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well, now we have exceeded Enchantress. Seven cards all day, every day. Yep. Alright, um, what, what do you do? I mean, you probably just keep playing the game. You're still up six life. Yep. If Enchantress can get rid of that Hado ever, then she can start threatening altars at long range. But... I think Ryu has still kept recurring it. I think it's still in his hand, so she'll have to parry it or something along those lines if she does want to get rid of the threat. Yeah, it's in um, his hand right now. Until then, that hope that rapid beam is completely unsafe. It's also generally really telegraphed if you're ever going to play it, so you need to get Ryu to range 7 or 8 to even consider it now. Um, Shattering Scream doesn't even trade that well into Hado. It just trades up 2 for a free gauge. So... She could also just melee Enchantress, like, it does exist, it is real, you just draw EXs because you draw so many cards, um, but still putting it pretty heavily in use favor with the overhead sly of Enchantress at 11, threat of another Metsuhado, admittedly now going down. The Way of the Warrior is good, but it's stronger into frontside Enchantress than exceeded Enchantress just because you are less vulnerable to the deck order for drawing your text. Um, so Enchantress probably just hexed this unless she was relatively unlucky. Um, yeah. I almost 100% uh, imagine you just tech away the warrior when you're looking at it like this, especially when you have a fresh deck Enchantress. Yeah. If you well, do tech, let's hope. If you do tech, always a chance you didn't. Um. And <laughs> otherwise, you're eating something, some something for breakfast here in a second next turn. Yeah, Ryu's, all of Ryu's action compression is down. We've seen both one punches, one inch punches, and both lightning reflexes. Uh -huh. um, so Enchantress could just like move out of spike range and plant a block. That would be a fine line. Oh no, overhead. Overhead exists. Nope. Yeah, Enchantress really needs to find like a tech or a light then to answer this. Even a light is going to be. Okay, oh. reading. Reading sounds good. Reading focus. That seems fairly reasonable because, like we said, we haven't seen those. There it is. Gets the spike. And that evens it up. That was good. Yep. That is good. 
Enchantress does not drop to seven though, because this is the end of a strike. She only draws on backside during the normal time when you would draw one card as any other character. Um, so she is down to five in hand right now. Um, yep, just in the range three. I mean, yep. three has just got to find. Uh, I'm just gonna boost defend. Second defend we saw boost, so that's full spikes down now. Yep. So again, with overhead and shaders at 11, you can probably afford to just not fret and spike. You can just overhead and ignore armor for like lethal when you get the chance arises. Yep, for you, um, one of those characters is blessed with overhead. <laughs> yep. Alright. What a boost. Enchantress here threatening a spike. I saw a card get turned face down. Yep, there it is. I think, have we not? Oh no, she just reshuffled, right? Yeah, so anything, basically anything is possible except more grasps. Yeah, anything except EX grasp. <laughs> or now uh, EX focus, apparently. The problem with the spike is it doesn't really beat anything we use that likely to play. We've seen a focus go down. We've seen, I think, both sweeps go down. Um, Ryu's got the defense. He doesn't even need to block if it's like an assault. Um, I guess Spike does beat a single Tatsu, but Ryu is getting pretty low deck, so if Ryu's going to Tatsu, there's a decent chance that he would just DX Tatsu anyway. Yeah, um, I mean, so, we'll see. If this really is like a Spike, it is actually pretty safe here. I mean, Ryu doesn't have a lot of answers into this. Yeah, even Crit Hado. Yeah. I mean, Ryu could just go for, like, a dive, but... Alright, crit hotto. That's... Uh, not great for Enchantress. She is actually trading down here, because she doesn't have... She has too many cards in hand to get the bonus armor. Mm -hmm. And, once again, pushing Ryu out is probably not to her favor with the hotto. She is also just dead to overhead. Oh, no, Metsus are down. Yeah, both Metsus are down, so we're good on that end. But I also yep. agree that uh, putting Ryu at max range when he's just going to recur Hado and hit you with it again here in a second is not the best thing in the world. Yep. What do you do about that? I guess the, the threat is... No, because the Shattering Scream doesn't hit right now. You don't have enough cards in hand. Uh -huh. If if Ryu just throws on a Hado, you need exactly another Fire Wave or you're just eating it. And even with the other Fire Wave, you're trading so this might be a mistake for Enchantress. Um, Fierce, so just, sure, uh, get some more pressure. Yeah, I think he's looking to overhead Fierce here in a second, I'm guessing. That would be good. That would leave Enchantress at one health, and you're giving her a turn to like set up a Shattering Scream, which could make the game closer. So this is an interesting decision. Um, yeah, that is true. That actually doesn't even break Shattering Scream because it's the one card that has six guard. Yep. Um, Although Enchantress I guess Ryu sure. could throw down the Swift afterwards, though, and then it's really scary. Now you've got the speed 7, 7 damage Hado, and Enchantress does need to do something about that, or just risk instantly losing to the cards that are probably in Ryu's hand. Yeah, I mean, I think Enchantress probably just has to get back to full here, don't they? I mean, sitting on 3 is kind of, like, risky. What I'd like to see Enchantress do is, like, maybe move action back to 8. Because she can do that and draw up to seven, and then that puts the pressure on Ryu to do something. Yeah, and she's also. He has to get in though. and can't also boost as well. Yeah, that's a really good action, actually, just moving back three. And they have the force uh, to do it. Yep. And if uh, Ryu doesn't do anything, you can just hit him with the fantastic rapid beam here once you redraw. Yeah, rapid beam for game, even if yeah. Ryu doesn't move in. But Ryu will definitely move in in response to that. There's. Just like have you to. have to. Yeah, 100%. Uh, um, one-fourth. Two-fourths. I do not like spending from... Uh, I don't like that. Yeah. I don't think there's anything in hand valuable enough to go down to two-gauge here, because now you've lost your own threat. Enchanter set rage eight without three-gauge can't hit either. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, uh, he confirmed it. So, maybe just banking on Ryu coming in, but Ryu should know that Ryu isn't in any rush to. Um, neither player threatening anything right now. Yeah, I really wish that they would have just spent one more card from hand and rapid beam, or threatened rapid beam. Well, now we're sitting at range 8, neither player can do anything like you said. I mean, Ryu down both the move 2 strikes and the move 1, and the, 
<laughs> and the move ones. Take another action. Oh, just run in. All right. What is this telegraph? I mean, Hado again. Oh, here it back says download. Yeah, I mean, it's probably uh, just Hado. I don't think Leo really has much incentive to play much else here, to be honest. Yep. Just keep the threat live. Enchantress again can't strike into this without trading, and the trade won't be particularly good for her. Um, and if she doesn't strike into it, then he can keep layering boosts, threaten just an overhead checkmate. Seems reasonable. Yeah, I think Lee is probably just going to uh, either just. That said, the X Humming Orb is amazing this turn. X I'd love to see the 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 rogue EX Humming Orb even up the game. Maybe that's something that Enchantress kept in hand. Oh, that would if I if she did, then I take back everything. This was a brilliant play. <laughs> yeah, just just for the EX Humming Orb. Oh. I guess you don't even need EX. You could do like a reading homing orb or uh, a well made real homing orb discarding zero. Oh, you have just, options. I just saw one card come down as a strike, so. Yeah, one card probably telegraphs a block, just to remove the fierce. It doesn't really help your situation, though, because you just loops the Hado again. Um, uh, it does get you back up to three gauge, which is nice. It does get the fierce out of play, which puts Ryu further away from that overhead checkmate. I wouldn't mind seeing Ryu like reshuffle or change cards. Well, he's got enough cards he can't change cards through his deck, but he could reshuffle. Yeah, there's the block. Yep. Well, and to be fair, Enchantress has infinite force. She'll go down some amount of cards this turn, but she can just draw up next time she needs to. So it's not the end of the world, but yeah, it just doesn't solve the problem permanently. I'd love maybe parry the Hado because Ryu again is not is out basically out of a lot of options. That yeah. might have been the better line, though. That I guess Ryu could just move in and keep the fierce alive. Tough yeah. to say. Well, now we got a recurring Hado again, though. That's the problem. And at range eight, I mean, or range five, that deems not safe against it. Not in the slightest. Yeah. And Shattering Scream is still trading. You are willing to trade the Shattering Scream if Ryu goes for it, just because then you're in one strike territory and it's your turn. But Feathers is not going to give you that option. Feathers just stepping in. Yeah. Taking center board, which is good, versus Exceed Enchantress, because she can run away quite well if she wants to. Um... Mm -hmm. I'm saying at range 4, we're threatening so much stuff, or so much more stuff with Ryu now. I mean, of what he has left, that is. We have the Tatsu yep. on deck, we have the dives somewhere. Yep. Actually, have we seen any dives from Rio? I don't think we've seen that many dives from Rio, if any. I don't think we have, yeah. I think all yeah. the dives are still up. Yeah. Um, we still have Tatsu's live, and we still have dives live, and we still have that one uh, Hado live, so next strike will be a mix-up 100%. Unfortunately, I do not see any way Ryu can advance his chain or get to 7, ignoring armor damage in one strike, so... Oh, Whatever no. he does, there will be two strikes left in this game right now. Yeah, 100%. I think that's exactly what Enchantress is just setting up for, is just playing the Shattering Scream, to be honest. Yeah. Could be good. Um, read, okay, there's the first tech we're seeing. Um, hmm. It's kind of... It's one of the situations where like neither player really wants to be the first to strike, though, because basically any strike here will result in a trade and then whoever did not initiate will be the one going into the empty board yeah. so Please. probably going to see some boost posturing to see if we can change that math somehow yeah and Ryu is starting to get really hurt by this uh, lack of options as well yeah I mean Robert. every time he draws he does get closer to being able to take like a big change cards and see a whole new deck which might be what Feathers is just buying time to do Well, what is this? Opponent may discard up to two cards. If this, if they do not discard two cards, this way plus two power. Oh, we're moving, moving to moving in. This seems like a bad place to stand with the shore use life, though, right? 
strange to with the shore use light or with the hot is light. Sure, use. I think we've seen neither copy, and though, like, obviously, Ryu would like to hold them for overhead. Um, right now, it's very probable oh, yeah, Ryu yeah, yeah, has yeah. either a speed 7 or even a speed 8 option at this range if you strike into him. Sorry, for some reason, I called Shoryu Hado. <laughs> oh no, I always, I always mess them up, don't worry. This also means if Ryu is willing to initiate a Tatsu, he can possibly get advantage and advantage chain into a win, depending on how you're willing to respond. Yeah, and we also um, just saw the Ryu reshuffle right there. Okay. So now that Ryu makes has sense. all the options live again, excluding and then the four cards they have in hand. So all they're missing is uh, Matsu Hado and an Assault in their deck. Which yep. is fine, I think. Yep. And still advantage chain with Donkey Kick and the uh, Tatsu. We really need yep. to. So he has only drawn one card from the new deck right now. He uses yeah. this as just a reshuffle instead of like a change card, so it's not too likely he has what he needs yet. Um, but yeah, he, he could, and as he keeps drawing, he'll get closer and closer to it. Now it's on champ just to figure out <laughs> how to close this <laughs> now, now that yeah. Now that Maria's sitting on a fresh deck again, but it's still scary if they come into that, especially with Shoryu on board. Yeah, Shoryu. right now I would definitely put it in favor of Ryu just because he has all this action compression in his live again, and he has action compression, he has advantage, he has overhead, he has ways to close out the game, whereas Enchantress really does need to rely on Ryu taking a strike that doesn't win, and then afterwards winning herself. <laughs> we see uh, we see Download there playing with the blindfold. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Raw strike. Oh, maybe that's what the defend was about, was like, with the defend you could EX Assault through the EX Shoryuken, and that would get you advantage and put you in position to maybe close out the game. But got tacked. Alright, Raw Strike. One card, Raw Strike. Yep. The Burger Flip. Crit Shoryu. Into the focus. Good play. It's so not 5 for 5, but if Ryu has just like the other Shoryu and the right card, this could be over. Yeah, um, because overhead is strong. Yeah. Not really. Yeah, we just does he it. have ex Tatsu in hand? If he does, that would be a really threatening play. Is overhead ex Tatsu? Because if you have only one Tatsu, Enchantress could probably flying charge out of it or something of the like. But with two, um, Enchantress has really limited options. She'd need like an ex flying charge to get out of there. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm hoping the feathers held on to there is the EX Tatsu just to kind of play it. I mean, this is a great place to play it, if any. Chantress has yep. nowhere to run except for with Flying Charge. Of course, can always CC. Yep, draw new cards. Way. Let's search his way. Because if he has a block at this range, Enchantress can't possibly kill him. So, yeah, he Chantress, has time. Chantress isn't blessed with the overhead. Nope. All right, we see a dive go down. Probably just making himself resistant to reading. Yeah. Um, Enchantress also does not have that many boosts worth teching, and looking at the board state, dive is probably not going to be a card you'll strike with ever again this game. Well, actually, isn't so... both focuses down? We saw one reading come out earlier, and then that focus is there. Oh, that's true. Um, Enchantress can just draw a lot of cards, and like she might eventually get one, but yeah, probably not immediately urgent then. So... Yeah, probably just the fact that it was less useful than other cards available to him. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I'm thinking too. Oh, one, two. Crosses over. Um. Well. Right. Yep, we're just uh, we're here. <laughs> if you're Enchantress and you have crosses left, you can just try to cross out here, I guess. And then if even if Ryu gets you with the Shoryu, that's the second overhead gone, which makes your life a lot safer. But that's two power that puts an end to that plan. Wait, I still want to see Ryu play the EX Tatsu, to be honest. Yeah, I think EX. I imagine if he had it, he would have gone for it. Though. Yeah. So maybe he had one and he might have drawn into a second, but. Overhead Tatsu will still do the job currently. 
Yeah, I think even regular Chatsu is fine here. Oh, we're seeing an EX though. Okay, plus two, this is plus interesting. One. Yeah. What Unfortunately, the there is nothing that will kill through a focus here for Enchantress. So if Ryu has a focus or a block, he is not at risk of dying. Um, what if this but, is like an EX cross or something here? Yeah, just to get out of... Yeah, that would be pretty safe. That would get the uh, defensive out of the way. That seems good if he, if he has it. What's the guard on Tatsu? Is it three or four? It's four. Oh, actually, yeah, okay. That would still trade. Yep, yeah, I still, I still think he just dropped the Tatsu here regardless. Unless this is... Wait. I wouldn't because Tatsu actually does risk just losing if you play it. Um, whereas yeah. if you just play safer, you can't possibly lose the strike. Oh, uh, yeah, Enchantress actually has three gauge, so yeah, this could be like an EX shattering or something. And yeah. Then yeah, you That's can't the mix pick up the Tatsu. Yeah. Ugh. That does make life hard. All right. Um, hmm. What about an EX sweep? Does that beat anything? That's pretty scary because then if you plays anything with four power, you just die before you get the counter hit. So probably not. Probably a shattering screen or a cross. How do you beat Shattering Scream here, though, with Ryu? Uh, just play a focus. You survive, and then next turn probably win yourself. Yeah, plus one armor, you'll survive with one hit, one health, yeah. Actually, no, you'll kill the like, Shattering Scream if you play focus here. <laughs> so yeah, you should just play focus here, actually, every day of the week, because plus two power there. Yep. Yep. But it is a mix-up, so... Ryu also part, did drop the Hadouken, so he might have drawn a second one, but if he hasn't, then he's pretty low on ranged options. Yeah, Free is looking this hard at what this could be. I don't think they have the focus. Yep. Could always block it as well. Um, wouldn't mind seeing nope, that. Oh, focus. The focus. All right, perfect. I mean, again, if it was a cross, this is a pretty good strike for Inch Cantress. Sorry, green lip. But that is game. That is game. So that will be 7 damage, which will put Ryu at 1, and then Ryu will strike back and switch for 6 into the 1 armor, which is 5, which is lethal. Yep. Alright, first game, Ryu. 1 health. Close game. Very yep. close game, <laughs> yeah. I will say the health totals, it was probably... Yeah, as close as it was, Ryu was pretty comfortably in the lead in that endgame, but... It was just one strike off, at least. Yeah, just one strike off. Enchan I wonder if we're going to see a download play Enchantress again or swap off. I mean, I imagine by their drafts, I think they're just going to go through the run the gauntlet. I don't think we're yeah, going to see any Yeah, I, I like switching in tournaments. It's just more fun to me. But you never know. I would love to see the Cami come out. That would be my pick. That's just your dream. for entertainment <laughs> value. Oh, we see the Enchantress get dropped into the Cami bag. <laughs> Um, ah. That said, let me just talk about match for a second. Go ahead. That said, uh, Feathers does need to pick first uh, under the rules of the tournament, I believe, right? Yep. So Feathers does get the counter pick in. I mean, let's see. What's Feathers have? Gold Lewis, you know, New Orokane, and the Kami, Hazna, Happy Chaos, and they. I don't know. I don't think I don't think there's any like specific thing you play into specific thing here. Um, there's probably things you don't play into things. And that's it. Yeah, I. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like a funky, a funky draft into a funky draft. <laughs> I could think of some specific matchups that I'd probably aim for or aim to avoid, but let's see what Feathers actually picks and base it on that. Oh, the new, the okay. New. Alright, well... I feel like if you are down low and you pick anyone but Happy Chaos, you're pretty happy here. Happy Chaos and Tenu sounds kind of miserable for the Happy Chaos, but the other three I think are all pretty reasonable in Tenu. Yeah, that sounds about right, honestly. I don't think Happy Chaos is very happy playing in Tenu, <laughs> so... But Lene has got a lot of pressure and can get in pretty easily because of the Season 6 boost on her cards. Hazama gets to really mess with Nu with 
the Ouroboros getting ducking into her range free weak spot, which is his also his one of his strongest ranges. And Cami has those range dodges, got lots of ways to move. Yeah, I must say you have two characters with a lot of movement here, and then you have Lene who has a lot of pressure and also has Lene movement. also has movement, yeah. 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 It's like any of these three I would favor into new, to be honest. Hundred percent. And also Chaos's movement unfortunately is backing up. <laughs> <laughs> Which you don't really want to do against new. <laughs> yeah, Chaos is also pretty weak to just above curve ranged options, which that is new. Uh, past range three, anyway. Alright, here's the season five matchup. Yep. No movie Hazuma. We have regular Hazuma on deck. <laughs> Alright. Well, I mean, Hazuma into new. New wants to play the game of Exceed and keep Hazma away, and Hazma wants to play the game of I'm going to strike you from two or three, take a guess. <laughs> yep. Uh, of course, uh, as per usual with these opening, uh, let's see. Yeah. I mean, picking New here after winning means that Hazma is going to go first. Oh, right. It's that thing we talked about way back when. Yeah, um, New likes to go first. <laughs> New likes to go first, and by picking her after a game you've won, you sacrifice that opportunity. Uh -huh. um, that said, initial results from the client seem to favor player two, so I feel like that's really interesting. We'll see if that pans out over more games as time progresses. Um, I wonder if I should check those, those stats in my <laughs> in my tournament, since I have all that foot actually in here, too. <laughs> I would love... Well... I don't know. Your tournament, the reason I think the player two results are so interesting in the client is there's basically nothing that biases them, unlike the other results. Ah, uh, yeah, true. Um, whereas in your tournament, the structure of the it's counter biased, pick, etc. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, like you said, Polter Hazama just gets to walk into News Week range and do whatever he wants, so... Wait, does he choose first slash second? Yes. Oh, Feathers made the new pick without knowing that. I wonder if this would have been the pick in that... If he had that information. Yeah. That is the crappy thing about picking new. Is new wants to go first so she can grasp you and put you to range 50 or make you at least guess the grasp. Uh, and when she doesn't get to go first, that means that gives the opponent a chance to play the run card, and suddenly they're at range one, and you're sad. <laughs> yep. Or this is all the, like Polter is saying, just immediately step in and strike at range three. Force new to play that relatively unfavorable mix-up. Oh yeah. Hey, hi, Polter. Sorry, my thing was down, so I didn't notice you were in chat. That's that's what you are talking about, Rose, is Polter's in chat there. <laughs> yes. Uh. Alright. Picking Kami and Linnae for tournament is something I'm not brave enough for. Fair. And um, I can adjust Chaos Chef for Polter, because I want to get a good turn one to play and spend back some kind of move to range three wild swing. Yep. Yep, and that's out of new sweet spot range, which okay. range three is fine. My bad. <laughs> yeah, I think either of those are completely valid options. I feel like Cammy probably has game in this matchup as well. But I'm definitely less familiar with her, so wouldn't want to hold myself to it as much. Yeah, I'm not familiar enough to count comment on Cami versus uh, New. I think uh, I think I think I mean either of these matchups, Hazama and Lene, are completely fine though. So I mean, Hazama here, either go to range three and start get in the range three and start striking, or just go to range one just because you can with run. Just whatever yeah. you drew here. Just don't prep. <laughs> don't do that. That's probably the one thing you just don't want to do here. Yep. And we immediately see the Ouroboros. Yep. Oh, that was uh, that was Yashal getting thrown into sealed area. I see. Yeah. The, the fact area. that he picked up the Ouroboros makes me think he's about to use them. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking here too. Okay, it's supposed to be one feed. Ah, uh, okay, Polter. That makes sense to me. I could see that. Ah, uh, yeah. Yep, to be basically. fair, she does have a lot of range dodgers at the exact range New wants to be, but you still don't get to do your strong things, so fair enough. And turn one, we see the Serpent's Redemption come out into the aerial backflip. Ooh, they had the aerial backflip in him. That's actually good for now. Alright, dive goes down in favor of throwing out a strike. 
Yep. Range um, three Hazuma exactly doesn't have a whole lot here, except for Venom Swords, which you're probably not playing. So, yep. I would just like to just see like a focus or maybe yeah. a Rising Fang if you don't have a focus, just to tank some damage and get in. But even that that cost force and spending force against New is uh, not uh, you great do, when you, you do are have relatively force. Yeah, you do have Serpent's Redemption out there to play it for free. Oh, that's true. Okay, yeah. it's not terrible. It's the block. Right. Just the block, yep. Is this spike? This would be the funny spike. Oh no, it's grass. Alright, goodbye. Yeah, <laughs> this is a pretty a pretty good start for new, honestly. Yeah. Oh, Hazama. Okay, Hazama doesn't have to pay anything though, because the force costs are reduced. Yep. Gets that three one one damage of value. But he is off off out there, and I don't think Hazama has any particular okay, he's got a few advanced twos, but like one of them's on Falling Fang, one of them's on the Venom Sword that he just used. Um, so hopefully he has a cross to run back in. Otherwise, this is pretty good for new right now. Yeah, I am also really hoping that we see a cross here because uh, new at this range is super happy to just let Hazama sit over there and sit there all game. <laughs> so yep. new can strike, new can build back her hand up. Whatever she does, she's pretty happy. Hazama needs to get in. Um. Here's the hope that Hazama has a cross sitting in hand or something at least, because there's only two grasped in deck, so... Yeah, this is definitely the start of how Hazama would lose to New, is if Hazama just has to make a bunch of force inefficient plays and get starved mm -hmm. out of resources. Because Hazama's actually relatively force expensive, despite his draw. Yeah, I would tend to agree, Polter. I think this Serpent's Redemption was pretty greedy. Oh, oh yeah, getting punished for it really hard. Adams, he didn't even he had the focus in hand and didn't play it into the grasp. I think that was also a mistake. Oh yeah, I a hundred percent agree that was a mistake. If we saw a focus just go down into the discard there like that. Um, being at range three with new and the new there though is still pretty good. He's just gonna strike into it anyways. Uh, this could be like a uh, super rage yeah. because make Hazama have the six speed option if not push get some range again. Oh, it was or sweep. it could be a super greedy sweep getting called out by the spike. Oh. Um, fair enough, I guess. All right, we're gaming today. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it would be that sick either. If Hazama <laughs> had the ultra boost, draw three and strike, but he does not. He just has to prep back up. Oh well. Yep. Yeah, I was still 100 percent expecting the super rage there, and then we see the spike come out into the sweep was. Something I wasn't expecting. I guess that is the mix up, right? Like, if you are expecting Hazama to Falling Fang to call out the Super Rage, Sweep mm -hmm. beats the Falling Fang, but not this time. Alright. Here comes the Strike from Hazama. Range 3 sitting there. There's a spike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's depressing because now Hazama's down. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Nice. Nice spike trade. Right. We're starved. Well, we're 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 starving here. We have no cards on either side. <laughs> News pretty okay. News got two gauge. Her seed draws her a card. Oh, she yeah. just needs to hit one more card, and she is basically off to the races here. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. God, this, this, game super rage. So, this game is crazy so far. Oh, right, that is a super rage. Oh, now we're back at range four. Oh my, oh, it's just a, okay. CC. I, I would, again, I, I am with Polter. I would love to see go into range free and wild swing. I don't think an attack from hand is automatically bad, even if it spins force, but like, use something at least. Don't just sit here at range four and get hit. Yeah. Yeah, did we spend for thing, or is this just, we're just playing? I think we're just This playing. is just raw. Yeah. Yeah, there's a sickest uh, storm. That can be invalidated, should be, because Azama doesn't want to just waste a force for no reason. Oh. But that's a sickest storm back up to range 6. Uh, I was favoring Hazama at the start, and I think in an optimal situation, Hazama would be favored, but I'm definitely putting this game in favor of New at this point. Yeah, I don't think Hazama. I think Hazama's gone. <laughs> I think we're gone. Uh, New can. It's New's game. New can do whatever they want right here. I mean, ideally, they probably want to just. Strike? I mean, what? Let's see. 
yeah, they probably just want to keep striking if they have something in hand, then a force and go. Uh, they could, yeah. They could also just, again, prep yeah. back up, force Azama to move in again. Um, eventually he'll draw a run and get an efficient movement, but it kind of looks like he hasn't yet, based on what we're seeing here. Uh, now <sighs> new probably exceeds. She can, she doesn't even have to, she has... Uh, yeah, it would probably be good. Just to not have to, not have to play next steps. Okay. But yeah, perhaps so. Just prepping. For sure. Fierce. Anything can happen, right? Like, someone could just pl misplay two mix-ups and then it's the Azama's game again, but yeah, outside of that, As Azama, really or new, super me. favored. Yeah, I think Fierce is pretty favored right now, too. I just think she has to not die to something random. Yeah. Uh, what? I mean, I'm still favoring that you just exceed here. That's what I would do. But It does overdraw, just... so I think it would have been nice to do it last turn if you were going to do it. Yeah. Ah, yeah, it looks like a parry. Like what are we parrying? Sweep? Interesting. Alright. Plus two power on something out of sweeps. So... That could be a parry sweep to make your own sweep safer. You still lose to a dive or a spike here because of the fierce. Or and just be a spike is spike. But um It could also be setting up the Calamity Sword, just reduce I don't like that if that's what it was though, because Zama has Rising Thing as well, which would be amazing in the Calamity Sword. Yeah, we still do have another Rising Thing. We're at one, but we still have another. Sin around. Yep. I'm so curious what this is. I mean, this is this is just a mix, 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 mix. What are we playing? Calamity Sword? Nope. Sword Dance. Sword Dance. It doesn't even hit. Um. Yeah, it's pretty pretty weird. I don't know why. Uh, oh, he's 100% certain about it, though. Alright. Alright. Uh, that was a really strange strike. Uh, maybe Feathers just misread the card, or maybe... No, I think Feathers would just wanted to draw two, to be honest. Because uh, Download pointed out to him with a little ping, and then... Uh... And then Feathers was like, yeah, this is a uh, kind of pingback showing that. That seems that was like certain. that can't be correct. Like, there has to have been a better option. Well, I, I guess I don't know Feathers' hand. Yeah. And, like, I, this card is really good, too. Like, Draw two, is... take seven, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that pretty funny, Tree? <laughs> yeah. I love Sword Dance. It's my favorite new card, basically. It's for seven, draws you a bunch of cards sometimes. Yeah. No Ouroboros versus Calamity Sword. Doesn't that Calamity Sword hit you even if you Ouroboros? Uh, I guess you could get in range for focus. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Yeah, I mean, Hazama's low on force, though, so I wouldn't want to waste the force if I were him. Especially when you already are threatening Rising Thing. Like, there already is a mix-up without the Ouroboros. Alright, well, this is... Uh... Zama needs to just sit here and draw, which feels bad for Christian. It's going to cost him force, yeah, 100%. Yeah, I mean, be, if he had the ultra boost, he could draw it and do aggression, maybe, but... Yeah, unfortunately, we don't live in that society. <laughs> there is no there is no snakes being thrown around here. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. New striking, full hand. Hazama, what do you got? No sweeps, that's for sure. EX Assault. All right. Calls out the new assault. Well, here we are. The Hazama just wins two strikes that he shouldn't have won, and he's back in the game, sort of. New does have a bunch of force to just leave with, though. Um, he's doing the bloody things. Uh, oh, plays counter assault, pays with counter assault. I see. I wonder if that should have just been a move action instead, to be honest, but. Yeah, Did they gets Hazama's range. Hazama's low on force, does have to prop... If he doesn't have the right cards in hand, he does still have to, like, wild swing or draw. Um, yeah, they burnt two legacy edges, so yeah, they did get draw two cards, okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now we're back at range four with uh, force from Gage, and that's it. Yeah. But we are up on life, so we can choose to take a trade here. If we do want to Ouroboros in, but then we have to watch out for, like, Calamity Sword, too. 
Uh, no, we're just gonna spend the other devouring thing to move in. Yep, fair enough. Yeah, farming sword feels guaranteed in hand, yo. Yeah, but if you Ouroboros, it actually has a mix-up versus Calamity Sword, right? Like, you can possibly be fake ouroboros thing and and if new throws away free gauge and doesn't even hit you that's pretty game losing all right here's the luminous slave gets her the die azama just preps again luminous slave means lots of basically everything is a threat right now um, I think at range three. Yeah, at range three, we were actually sitting with a decent amount of things like that. But yeah, now everything hits at range one, two. Another parry comes out. I wonder what others is trying to parry. Doesn't find it, whatever it was. Well, there's the snake. We finally found one. Yep. Coils falling and snake and block. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, range three. This Hazama only has uh, one more rising fang that can deal with luminous. Or well, right luminous now, grass just is. beats everything. If new has it. I think we've seen one down that's sitting engaged right now, and the other's still alive. Ah, yeah, just grasp with uh, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I feel like if Zama wants to do anything, he's going to need to worry about us to have some mix-up threat. Even then, the range 2 grasp just kind of beats everything, except the focus as 100%. well. Um... Thinking for striking. Yep. Here we go. Will we see the Ouroboros come out? Will we see another snake? Relax, counter still. Yeah, 100%. Just go to range one now that there's no push three. Yeah. But that's not what we're doing here. Maybe. Um, I think he's debating on the Ouroboros. He's looking at but even at Ouroboros, he just goes to range two, right? Yeah. He still needs to get to range one at that point. That's so. valid. Spending Venom Sword for Ouroboros. Yep, Ouroboros going down there, makes sense. Um. Missy's done, we get more cards. Alright. I wonder what the actual correct discard order is. I'm not gonna call it out because I don't even know myself. But when you check out my snake and set Ouroboros, which card should be on top of discard? Energy boost is useful without one spell time is fighting with the sort of engagement. Focus into focus is what we just saw. Yep. Zama needs to go to 16. Hopefully the players have that covered, though. Or, wait, did, did New spend? No, she didn't. Did no. She was or even if she did, she would have hit because of the Luminous. Yeah. Hey. But yeah, at this point, Zama is actually back in the game. Like, he could exceed here Yeah. Um, if he wanted to. That's actually what I was um, thinking would be a good play, is to just exceed here as Hazama. And then even if new gets distance, you have the really flexible Ouroboros to get yourself back in. You've got the life drain to expand your life lead. Um, yeah. Yep, he could just swap. Yeah, Nash Wild Swing is another option. I feel like we have not seen both Islamic Grasps down, but I could be wrong about that. We've seen one. No. We, yeah, I think maybe. Oh, let's see. We saw one as a boost. Yeah, I don't know if that's said. Or not. I think the is out of things that'll just beat slows here. Yeah, I'm wondering about the same thing. Um, is that blue? I'm never sure what about that username. Is a mix up even good enough? Yeah, I'm actually not sure. Well, welcome to the stream, the world. 
I've seen this with the world forever ago, but I also don't remember. I'd have to go back and check. Uh, I just say it's a plus three cut to red for me. Can't pull like four turns ago. Okay, it was blue. Hello, welcome. Yep. So his Hama gets pushed back out. Uh, why is he pushed two? I'm a little confused. Wait, can you interrupt the players for a moment? Uh, why is his Hama range four instead of range three? There we go. Question. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, because Alter Space was in play. Super Rage. Ah, great. Thank you. Okay, I did not realize the boost was in play. I am just missed that entirely, I guess. That's okay. I didn't even see the strike happen. <laughs> I was looking at chat and the strike just kind of happened. <laughs> All right. Well, now Hazama's back at range four. I still want to see Hazama just exceed here in a second. Probably get back into range first before we see him exceed. He doesn't even have to, though. If he exceeds, he can just uh, aura Boris his way back in. Oh, we see the... Uh, Reshuffle for a new reshuffle, game, yeah. yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exceed feels like a big mistake on Haas. On this turn, I feel like it is. Yeah. yeah. On this turn, if you want to be ag ag aggressive, you can just be aggressive without exceeding. Now we get yeah. to turn we wanted for. Uh, two to four, but yeah. Two to four, yeah. I, I think. Well, it looks like Hazama is going for the Exceed. I do agree with Halter. I don't think this is the right turn for it. Um, especially because, like Blue was saying, the mix-up might not be there. Um, New does have 6 gauge. I wonder if New is trying to assemble Exodia to the full Exceed uh, Sword of Destruction. That would be hype. But Probably a little unnecessary, but probably I mean like very in this game, I think. But the exceeds you love to see it if it happens. Uh because of the exceeds hit advanced three, you can actually proc this ten power. Oh, because it has hit advanced three, that's actually really funny. <laughs> yeah. I never knew that. I think that's the intended way to play that astral. I um, saw the last one and tell him the remaining six. Oh, I see. Uh, they just want to have confirmation that he can just uh, share the last six cards. Yeah, I think they want permission to look at the last card in his deck. Up to you. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I think that's the intended way to play that Astral, but I, I always just mix up at range one if I have to. Yeah, if you want to make your opponent... I mean, this is a tournament game. If you want to make your opponent uh, look through the entire discard and figure out themselves, go for it. <laughs> it is a tournament game, after all. <laughs> I think it's just a it's just a gentleman's thing we do where uh, we tell the opponent our remaining cards. All right. <clears throat> Someone's ultras are big threats when online. Okay, shorten the time. <laughs> yep. Yep. I leave it up to the discretion of the players whenever it comes to sharing the last cards in your deck because it is a tournament game. Technically, the rules don't dictate that you have to. It's just a gentleman's agreement that we do here to do so. Just to shorten game time and stuff. Alright, Feather's Overdrawing needs to discard. He really looks like he wants to land that Sword of Destruction. I am entirely into it. Oh yeah, I'm 100% on board with just landing Sword. Um, Overdrive takes for his Ama, Life Drain 1. Players have got it covered. Although, unfortunately, sword doesn't kill here, but it does do uh, 13 damage. <laughs> just pretty if good. You land out. the full six gauge exceeds sword of destruction. You have the moral victory. Like, you can just win the set at that point. Yeah, true. I am though. Did we just see the reshuffle? Yeah, we did. Just see the reshuffle. Yeah, during the XC, that was what they were talking about in chat. Like, his mix-up is just not good, so that's another reason why exceeding on this turn was probably not the play, was he's wasting overdrive time doing that. 
Yeah. 100%. Um. Actually, wait. Just hold up again. What happened? We saw. Oh, download Drew instead of. Uh... He he. Okay, I see. He took prep action. Did he take prep action or did he? Oh. Cool. My bad. I mean, it's kind of up to his discretion, right? He could either... Okay. He could have just prepped through the deck, to be honest, if he wanted yeah, to. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought happened. But he had the wrong number of cards in hand. Mm -hmm. Good catch. Alright. Range 4. Uh, This is probably just Sword. No, it's Spike. Uh... Into the sweep, that's good. Yeah. Now sword kills. <laughs> this is kind of kind of what Polter's talking about. If Azama had the gauge, the sweep would, the spike would have just gotten hit for like seven here, from that eternal coils. Mm -hmm. But uh, no good. Well, sword kills now, so I think that'd be really hype. Uh, we just Hazama see the first come out. Makes burst. Sense. Yep. All right, we need to see Hazama strike so that sword doesn't kill him. That said, if he strikes sword, just like he would need to aura burst forward to range two for sword to not be a lethal threat. Yeah, I think that's what he's planning on doing here. There's no way you um, don't. I mean, yeah. And he's down both spikes again. Already? Engage. Yeah. One engage. Oh, new is. Yeah, both engage for new. Gotcha. I don't think new really has a way to beat up. Uh... A slow here if they really wanted to threaten one. Just dive over it. Alright, Ouroboros going down. Gets rid of Rising Fang for this. Sure. Uh, which player are you referring to, Polter? Because Sama has drawn like five cards after the reshuffle already. And News drawn something similar, probably a slightly less. Yes, uh, yes, Hazama took damage for the spike. He was at 16. He's now at 12 because of the overdrive tick. Mm -hmm. Ooh, game. okay. This is also a 6 gauge option. This one's a lot safer than the one I was oh! looking at. Um, the block bait. Yeah, he bursted already. Uh, this is okay for Hazama. For Hazama. Like, he got rid of the the force, he got rid of the gauge, but New can now leave the corner with the hit effect um, and start making a lot of space on board again. Though Hazama does have the cards, and um, th this is a reason I was thinking there was a turn when the overdrive would have been okay, is even if New makes space, Hazama gets to spend one force to advance two and strike. Um, but the overdrive is running out pretty quickly. Yeah, we only get one more turn of use of it. Yeah. Uh, ditching, devouring, ditching. No ultra to ditch, or we're not considering ultra. So, devouring and venom. Yep. I think Azama should just take one. Azama's pretty force sensitive. No reason to spend a force to block one damage here with these life totals. Yeah, just take the one. Eat the one, you'll get it back next turn. Yep. Alright. News overdrive finishes up. News should flip back to front side. They still have a grasp in there. Right. And don't they oh. still have a grasp? Oh, yeah, yeah. Never mind. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Happens uh... sometimes. <laughs> uh... Okay. Well, again, with Overdrive new, just everything hits at this range, so. Yeah, it's pretty good mix up. Yep. New can just play whatever they want. They could even drop the cross here. Just go crazy. Go ballistic. Falling fangs. There it is. Cross. Yep, cross works. Hazama needs to validate. I'm not going to correct them this time because I'm embarrassed myself and I think they've got it. Uh, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. The number of times the cast or co casters have uh, called out something or I have that was wrong it happens to all of us. All right. I verify with the block and gauge. Uh... New back to range six. Yep. And Hazama. back to three gauge. Running out of force. Closest he can get this turn is just range four, too. Um, yeah, 
What's especially depressing about this is Hazuma has to get in because Legacy Edge exists now. Oh yeah, I guess New did reshuffle. I guess she yep. could. This card is kind of a meme though. Like New could just play anything else instead. Yeah, but I mean, what's a minus four range? I think it's a real threat, isn't it? Oh, oh, it's, not, the, well, oh it's not it's, minus. She's range, gonna it's flip plus back. Range. That's right. That's right. This isn't a rough. This card range. is really for like the anti-zoner matchups where like this is your I always win at range eight against anyone card. Mm, yeah, um, Legacy Edge. Makes sense. Well, yeah, Hazama's just got to figure out something here, because they can't sit with range 6, especially, versus new. Hazama prepped, actually. Hazama's doing exactly that. Um, oh boy. That's new burst? No yep. more sword. That's fine. Sword would have been cool, but it's not necessary. I wonder if New's supposed to exceed again, because she's out of Calamity Swords, um, so her other gauge options are not going... Well, I mean, no need to do it this turn, but if Hazama does get back in, um, she doesn't have anything to threaten at range 3 right now. New also just preps, it looks like. Yep. I mean, Hazama's gonna tick out here. Gonna get right. last health. Yep. 10-7. to seven. Azama cool. flips back to front side, Azama runs in. Checks out. Both players are down to like uh, 13 yeah. cards in deck for New, 11 in deck for Azama of the second shuffle. Yeah, Pulcher both uh, both people have bursted now. Azama Brute bursted a while ago. Uh, sitting at range 3, I mean, as New you don't have to exceed, but... You're down both things, you don't have anything to spend your gauge on except for fours right now. Yeah, that's why I think it would be a reasonable yeah. play. I agree. Um, Make everything hit. Who also gets you out of the corner again? Mm hmm. That too. Gets you out of the corner and Crick face again too. With that beautiful hit move three. Uh, Hazma has, like, what, one sweep left still that we're scared of, since we have no spikes now? Um, Even then, Super Rage is still on the table, so it actually doesn't matter too much. Yeah. Yeah. There's the, there's the Exceed, there's the Overdraw, Feathers needs to discard one. For his way, Spike Chaser, sure. Yeah, that's fine. Alright. So here we are again. Yeah. Zama needs to weather this. Um, does have health to work with, but could definitely die during the overdrive if New throws out some really high power hits. Um, how many blocks does Zama have? I see one engage. Zama's spending for Ouroboros here. Looks like. I want to say the other one went into discard, but I'm not going to hold myself to that. Fair enough. Problem is, if New has the Grasp, even with the Ouroboros, you need like exactly a focus to even have a mix up. Yeah, yeah. We did see a Grasp go down into New's discard, though, so the other one's floating around somewhere. I mean, if New has it, I think she just drops it. Uh, she's going to drop a sweep instead. Into the focus. Okay, well, That's you did fine. have to focus, so good call by New. Um, four for four. Um, yep. Zama gets swept. And then draws one. But now New's turn, and New will be backing out to range three as well. With her overdrive. Yep. Well, yeah. I mean, what's 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 new got? Range three, got everything. That's down. Another focus. Yeah, you could just drop grasp here, and you're fine with that. What's Hazma yeah. gonna do once you drop the grasp if you have it? 
the sad thing about that though is that will be your last strike of your overdrive i believe no yeah no it won't yeah okay two cards yeah away. yeah um craft the cross here if i are online could also strike normally the one downside is if you run yourself out of grasps and Hazama has any uh, eternal coils left uh, and gets into position to land that, that could be a really threatening option. Range four, speed six. Yeah. Um, but if you land the grasp, you're going to. I guess only range five. So Hazama could even Ouroboros in and do it if he can like find a block or something to get the third gauge. Still, you think like block might be down. So. Ah uh, yeah, true. Yeah, you're right. Because if, uh, yeah, we could be threatening the uh, three gauge ultra. That is pretty much the most threatening thing here, I think, is the three gauge ultra that actually will end game. Oh, actually, no, there's a lot of things that could end Nu's life. Yeah. Though a lot of them you have to get in first, and if Nu does yeah. have a grasp, it's going to be hard. Um... I'm going to think about what this is. I mean, what else could this be from now? This could be a million things from now. Yep, again, everything hits. The only the only limiting yeah. factor is how risky you're willing to be with that for your remaining life. Yeah. Yeah. Could even be like a cheeky sword dance for lethal. Get his armor when he's not expecting to. Um, that said, I feel like it's just a fast option. Just get guaranteed value. That's the sweep. Crossing out. Three to three now. And Tazama is out of range of everything. I like so, this. Pitch yep, force. New skin. Actually, even if you pitch force, you're still screwed. Yeah, if if you unless you have a block with his Zama, I don't see a way back into this game. Even with a block, you're super behind. But I think without a block, no matter what you do this turn, you can just hit you, and end the game. Yeah, I think you're extra screwed without a block. You're already screwed with a block. You're just extra screwed. Um, New hits you with whatever she feels like, and you're toast. This has been kind of interesting game. A roller coaster, right? We fought Hazama be favored. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Then new, new in the lead, then Hazama in the lead, and now we're back, swinging back to new. The pendulum. Yeah. Well, hey, we thought new had this forever ago, but oh, we, we are opting to spend force to actually move. In, no, we're CCing. Alright, so maybe block his life then. That has to be the only thing that, that could be. It's block being life. Yes. Alright. Alright, new, throw it out. <laughs> if you have spike, throw it out. If you don't have spike, throw something out. I think we saw both spikes caught and gauge after the reshuffle, and last time yeah. thinking of the wrong point of the game. I mean, you have so many options you can throw here, you just throw out something, preferably something that gives you advantage, but I don't think new has anything other than a soul that gives you advantage, so. Yeah. I mean, you don't even need advantage because Hazama's action compression is limited to his actual ability, and he's just too far away for that to work. So you will get another turn no matter what he does. Um, but yeah, New just going for a strike makes sense. Cash out while you can. Okay. New will have enough gauge to exceed again if she wants to. Dive. Um, dive. Dive is. Dive hits the entire board. Hazama needs exactly block or else he loses. Oh, uh, yeah, that is true. Oh, rip. Well. GG. Alright, GG's. Yeah, I think he is looking for block. <laughs> Alright, so New takes that three. Nope, no five. block. I think you were right. We saw it go down already. Um. Oh, okay. He could have had. I think he did. Did we just see an EX Rising thing go down? That would have survived. That actually would have won if that is what we saw, but I didn't see it quickly enough. The hand was moving fast. Yeah, oh, that'll be a question for post game. Oh, Enchantress, just raw. 
Raw, don't uh, care. Fathers needs to pick first, but uh, Dallin's done this before in the tournament with Bison. Just like, I'm going to play his character. I don't care that you technically got to counter pick you. Yeah. Um, I mean, so? you, you still have to pick, uh, as Fathers, you still have to pick with the intent that he could just switch. Because, I mean, that's up to the download's discretion. They could just be like, oh, I shuffled up the Enchantress. Just kidding, I'm playing something else. I don't know, it depends what they're saying in voice. Depending on what they say, I feel like that could be pretty scummy. Like, if you actually, like, I'm going to play Enchantress, and going back on that. But Yeah, but by, but by tournament rules, you know, technically. Yeah, fair enough. All right. We're seeing the Gold Lewis. This is the first Gold Lewis game of the tournament, by the way. <laughs> uh, I would have played him if I didn't go to and make a match against Download, because I always kind of play through my whole picked roster, usually. Yeah, but you also picked didn't a, get to him. Gold Lewis, I think. How many times yeah. has Gold Lewis been picked, I think? Gold Lewis. Uh, yeah, you're the only other person to pick him, actually. I feel like Gold Lewis is super favored in this matchup. I have not actually played it. I could be totally wrong. Um, but, yeah. I, I feel Gold Lewis has got this. Uh, Gold Lewis's name is trying to take up half my freaking thing. Alright, there we go. Gold Lewis versus an Enchantress, and Enchantress technically has first turn if he wants it. Yep. Um, she wanna... should take it and just try to land a Humming Orb, probably. Like, no reason not to. Get your first gauge, beat the Behemoth Slam. Doesn't do any damage, but pushes Gold Lewis out, makes him spend it. Um, Enchantress is another character that likes turn one, though more specifically for the Humming Orb than new everything <laughs> yeah you know that, this is another funny thing that about this that's going to be about this matchup is so gold Lewis is the big hand character with the nine cards but enchantress also keeps her hand healthy all the time and gold Lewis also has an insanely healthy hand all the time <laughs> playing two characters with great card economy actually yeah but gold Lewis also has the card quality so you can see enchantress oh, yeah, like true. burn through all her force and not not get to the finish line whereas gold Lewis will just keep having cards to play um, we'll see. Yeah, that's 100% a problem here, is that Gold Lewis does have that good card quality to just kind of smack you down. Gold I Lewis guess Fire Wave is also a pretty safe opener. Gold Lewis would need to have, like, an EX Dive or an EX Slam to do anything to it. So. Mm -hmm. That's the strike. Fire Wave, Humming Orb. Probably one of those two. Dex EX Dive. dive. Hope it's the humming orb. Oh, it was the dive. That's spicy. Uh, well, I mean, we did see uh, we did see download play. Uh... Oh, yeah, actually, no, you got it. Cool. Yeah, I mean, we do see a uh, downloads playstyle with enchanter seems to favor melee range. Yeah, so... I mean. No reason not, like, again, you're not terrible at melee, but, like, no reason to go for it when you don't have to. The, the best reason to make that strike, I think, is if you just didn't draw any other good mix-up option. Um, yeah, although single dive into Gold Lewis is also a little bit risky, considering Gold Lewis is king of, uh, king of EXs. Yeah. King of Xs. I'm not actually sure. I keep meaning to run this through a hypergeometric calculator. If Gold Lewis is actually more likely or less likely to have a DX than the other characters, oh, really? my guess is more likely just because you see so many cards on the relatively generous mulligan. But you you have the bigger deck size as well as the bigger hand size, which does matter. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Well, let me know when you get the math done on that, because now you got me kind of interested. All right. There's Fire Orb. Fair enough. Fire Orb. Two for four. Enchantress again can. Has to validate, but at that point can... Oh, was that what the assault was in game one? Was he had forgotten to validate and he just validated after? Well, even then he could have drawn... But uh, whatever. There's the validate, and then draws three. Draws three. So they're going for a new hand, which means they really like those last two cards in their hand. You say that, Chica, but you're just throwing away both dives if they actually did open Homing Orb, which is a real option. It's good against the magic shot, though, for sure. Yeah, because Helming Orb actually just breaks the extra. That's funny, by the one. Yep. <laughs> Alright, well, here comes Gold Lewis with a single card. Who needs seeing the X's? I'm surprised Gold Lewis didn't just X-E, to be honest. Uh, there's a bit of... 
consideration for your hand size, like I think, and maintaining gauge. Hmm. Grasping the um, flying charge. I mean, this is fine, right? This is good for range interest. You can dump her yeah. all hand here. Um, yeah. and probably should. Just fly your safe. Unless she wants to get into the corner. Uh huh. Um. Yeah. I would love to see Enchantress just get full spend. There we go. Technically, the flying charge should be under lows. Looks like Feathers is going to... Oh, they're just discussing it. Okay. I don't think it matters for Enchantress. I think she doesn't care about discard. She does with Magic Shot. And you want to correct them? I don't really think it matters enough. Magic Shot... Yeah, I don't think it matters enough either because it's a special going into gauge. I mean, I guess it. I guess it could matter for a specific game state. Uh... Wait, they've got it covered. I think. No. Flying charges still top, top card of discard. Yeah, whatever. They've got it. Enchantment oh, you're right, it does. Specific. Thank you, Blue. Okay, I don't have to feel guilty uh, anymore about not wanting to interrupt the players. Alright, good catch then. I wasn't aware of that. Whatever uh, Enchant Magic Shot is. What is Enchant Magic Shot? Again? Magic Shot. Enchantress's card, Magic Shot, is a 4 special, so even though it adds a top card of discard to gauge, you don't actually have to care about discard order because you always discard when you uh, play yeah. it. You make good the only time you have to care is when you're doing the EX, you have to know that you technically can do either order. Sounds reasonable to me. Alright. Well, we just saw Enchantress cross out of the Slash at range 1 from Gold Lewis. Oh yeah, that would be really funny, actually. Yeah, Critical Attack. I'm very surprised we never saw that boosted game one. Critical Attack is her boost on Shattering Screen. I feel like it's one of Enchantress's most important tools, especially on front side. Um, kind of just says, we're going to play a mix-up, and if you lose, you discard your hand. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's and Gold nasty. Lewis, uh, maybe that's another reason to hold on to the gauge instead of exceeding, is to have like a little bit of a built-in reload. Um, but... Yeah, if he Gold Lewis loses his whole hand, it is actually pretty problematic for him. This doesn't... Oh, okay, this is EX. Okay, and the fire great. Wave. Um, yeah, they'll break this... the fire wave. Yeah, that stuns out the fire wave. Uh, uh, I think the Chandra still needs to validate, though. Yeah, she will. So keep an eye on that, yep. Are they gonna... Has uh has has Downlock gotten the benefit of the armor in either of these matches yet from this? I don't think so. No, he has not. Playing the raw fire waves. Uh, I really don't like spending gauge on front side enchantress because your gauge is so important to you and your force is so free. Um wait. What's up? Push two? <laughs> no, not that. Push pull one. It's no, done that. Good point. Uh, I'm acting like fire wave going to gauge is normal. Goodness. All right, here comes uh, badass boost from Gold Lewis. Badass. I mean. Just means Goldless doesn't have to play uh, EX from hand here. We saw a slash go down. I think we saw both slashes go down actually. Still have yeah, rise but on Enchantress table. might have made this call out. Like this Badass doesn't actually change the math against the Homing Orb. Homing Orb will beat everything. Yeah, looks like we're crossing out of whatever this is. Nope, nope. Brain actually, that's really funny. The Badass makes the cross worse into Homing Orb, I think, because Gold Lewis ends up at range six instead of four. Well, <laughs> worse in some senses. Damage is damage. Alright, yeah, we just boost Thunder Verge so we can get back in. Makes sense. Yep. Um, this boost is interesting. I feel like it reads... Like, I, I, I want to like this boost, but every time I've played it recently, my opponent just like does some set play, and then at the start of my turn, I walk into their light or something, and I'm sad. <laughs> walk into their light. <laughs> uh, Thanks yeah, for that, Chica. 
Thanks for traumatizing me. <laughs> Did that happen? He <laughs> could just traumatize you when he walked into his light. Nice. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, I mean, we're gonna walk into what range four versus uh three three hand enchantress. Yeah, there's not too much threatening she has, given the fire wave is down, she probably hasn't seen the other. So you can have magic shot, Goldos is used to balls, good magic shot answers, so... Um... Oh, no, we're walking to range 2 now, let's go! Here we go, melee enchantress, we're back. Oh, God. I wouldn't <laughs> have minded seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think Dalma did not realize this was going to happen. We'll see if Looks like Feathers is letting him take it back, wants to let it go to range 3 instead. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah. Sure, that's what the players want to do. Yeah. Alright, well, uh, sitting at range 3 now. On Goldus' turn, which is pretty scary, because now Enchantress would need to Wild Swing the Homing Orb to beat his on-curve options. Yeah, I think... Um, uh, but he's just going to prep up. Sure. Why are you saving all this gauge for though? I'm still curious. Maybe he wants to land the the down four the gauge uh, yeah. down of the system. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's probably why. There is that... also I wouldn't personally subscribe to this because I think the value of gold is is that exceed side. But you could be thinking like it's enchantress. I probably am not gonna have too many opportunities to land these behemoth typhoons. So I'd rather just have the gauge for more flexible, like, cancels or resources. Yeah. Draw two and strike. This could be a homing orb again. Yep, we're back to homing orb. Yep. No, it is down the fire wave, which is always sad. EX, sorry, not, not a homing orb. EX at this range. I almost wish that... Dive? No, not dive. Magic EX magic shot. shot. Oh my god, deck this critter actually is going to matter, technically. Uh, th download gets to the so side, to which gauge, card yeah. goes to gauge, yeah. Yeah, puts grass to gauge. Good Looks download. like that's the choice, fair enough. Download it one but hand. now, download one card in hand. I don't know if I'm a huge fan of this. I, you could have just struck with the fire wave, and it would have been reasonable into Gold Lewis's options, unless he has exactly assault. Um... Depends what this last card is. If Enchantress has kept like a cross to cross out of danger, but even then Goldus could cancel and do something spicy to change the situation. Goldus could like dash in EX uh, down with the system if the deck order has favored him. Yeah, I mean, Goldus. That would be very funny. I don't know if it would be the, the right play, but. Goldus is just sitting on options. I mean, you have five gauge. You can exceed. You can play down with. You can save it for ex down with the system. You can cancel like a madman, like you do in season seven. Although Goldus yeah. doesn't have as many cancel boosts as the other characters. Yeah, Goldus is pretty lumbering for a season seven character. Yeah. Um, which fits around him though. <laughs> yeah, pretty thematic. Yeah, but I mean, we're not sitting in a range where we're looking to land a lot of behemoth typhoons. I mean, at range three, we're without huge. We're only threatening spin and. Rise, anyways. Now um, that uh, both slams are down. That's correct. Rise is pretty dominant right now, though, because all both the fire waves have gone down. Yeah, it's not gonna see a um, swing get boosted. Go into range two with it. Skyfish. Striking raw dog one card. Yeah, I mean this is a good range for Gold Lewis. If this is the cross for Enchantress, though, she should just mash it. So I hope it is. Um. Yeah, I agree. The oh, drop. oh, into the oh, that's that's nice. actually good for Enchantress, funnily yeah. enough, because if you get caught with one card in hand and it's not a good card, you're in trouble. But now Enchantress gets wait, discard, yeah. At the end of your turn or during cleanup? Oh yeah, during cleanup. Yeah, so this is actually better for Enchantress than getting hit by a spike, uh, which is <laughs> pretty funny. Um, yeah, that's right. She has a during cleanup trigger. That's so funny. <laughs> during cleanup trigger. Oh, that is and now actually... maybe Enchantress just succeeds anyway, but theoretically yeah. Enchantress has these options and should be aware of them before making that choice. 
hundred percent. That's way too funny, actually. The cleanup trigger. Yeah. That just shows you how much I play against this character. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> yeah. All right. We can run some games. I like Enchantress. She's a, she's fun to play. Uh, All right now, this is the cross, right? It's got to be a hundred percent. The down off the system call out the cross. Just that would the be game, so basically. cool. I would love that. Oh my god! Oh my god! It happened. That works. That's good enough. The wild swing down with the Did system. I... Let's go. <laughs> oh, no, it's just to burn it down. But like, it's, yeah, burn it, it down. Works. Burn it down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it works too. I, I actually love this. I love that it's burn it down. I never see this card get played. I love this. Uh, Golduus has the hit effect. Hopefully, the players are like familiar enough with the card. Okay, good. Yeah, good. good, good. Yeah, this card is pretty niche. I feel like the situation for this card is like if you're zoned out super hard and you can put down a power boost first, then it becomes a quite a good card. But until then, it's just the anti-zoning tool for the most part. Yeah, well, where it rains once, this is literally anything. But ideally, this is probably uh, the ignore armor one, crush. That would be pretty good. Enchantress, I think, has one grasp life, and that would be her way out. But yeah. Other than that, she'd need to like do a risky dive. Well, I mean, Crush has two good properties here, right? Because it has like, ignore armor on it, and then also it's after close two, and it's uh, guard six, so it's pretty much unbreakable for Enchantress anyways. Yep. Just insanely good here, I think. Good quality. I really hope this is just Crush. Oh, it's focus. I mean, that works too. That's game. All right, GG. Wow, pretty fast best of five. Yep. I think we, we had a, we had best a three of three downloads literally longer than this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks well, for having me. Fun games. I'm glad I was here to see them. Yeah, that was a pretty fast uh, best of five. Well, uh, I hope everybody enjoyed hanging out here and watching the best of five. A 3 0 into a 3 0 is what we just had. Um, and then, last but not least, we'll have Feathers versus Poulter for the grand finals. And of course, if there's a reset, we'll have another set of games. Uh, thank you for joining me, Rose, on this wonderful journey of watching this happen, and uh, all, the, all your Enchantress experience commentary coming in handy here for the two Enchantress games. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm glad that uh, download took last or Donut took last cast when I got this one because I got to cast two Enchantress games. Let's go. Two Enchantress games. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. All right, perfect. Well, I hope everybody has a good night and thank you for tuning in and thank you for joining me, Rose. And yeah, bye everybody. Take care.